So the Chicago Bulls season is over. Very, very weird season for the Bulls. And now they go into an off season in which there are a ton of question marks about the future of this roster. A couple of big free agency decisions here for Chicago off the bat. DeMar DeRozan is an unrestricted free agent. I would anticipate that he is going to end up elsewhere. It feels like this partnership has kind of run its course. Um, they were really good there for, for a little while, a couple of seasons ago, but it, it just feels like it's time for him to go elsewhere. He's going to have suitors. He's going to have teams that are going to want to add him to a contending piece. And you know, he wants to have that championship experience and it's it's just not gonna happen in Chicago. I've talked about this for a little while. They should have looked at trading him last year in the middle of the year. This year, they were committed to, to keeping him on the roster. I'm sure they'll make him an offer. I'm sure they'd like for him to come back, but it just feels like a situation where there's gonna be enough interest out there in Amar DeRozan that he is going to end up somewhere else. The only, you know, possible way to save this for Chicago is if he wants to go to a contending team, maybe they can work out a sign and trade and get some level of value in exchange for Amar DeRozan. But as always, there's always a possibility for Chicago that they do decide to just run it back and not actually rebuild. But I'm hoping that in this off season, uh, DeMar DeRozan gets to go elsewhere and Chicago does finally decide to rebuild. The other guy as well that's a free agent is Patrick Williams. Um, he, I don't think is going to have a huge market. Chicago, I'm sure, would like to bring him back. We saw this a couple years ago with Kobe White would like maybe get him on kind of like a medium-sized contract, kind of a prove-it deal. And obviously that's worked out really well for the Bulls with Kobe White. It's just... It just hasn't happened with Patrick Williams. Injury stuff, zero offensive confidence. There's clearly tools and athleticism there, but the the overall ceiling for him as an NBA player is just not very high at this point anymore. And I think it's it's much more likely that he ends up kind of on that that Cam Reddish kind of path where he's just bouncing around to teams as an interesting piece, but doesn't truly make an impact. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up walking this offseason from Chicago as well. Also worth mentioning um, that Lonzo Ball has a player option this offseason. I would expect him to pick that up. They're still kind of waiting on exactly what his health situation is going to be moving forward, but that feels like it needs to be mentioned. Then Alex Caruso is a free agent in the following offseason as well, 2025. So an opportunity there for them to potentially get some value out of Caruso in the offseason, like I think they should have at the deadline line that's kind of the free agency update moving forward for Chicago they have a handful of other guys that are signed long term of course uh Levine Vucevic Kobe White Io apart from that though uh the future looks pretty bleak in Chicago and I think the the real sign of them trying to rebuild will be them actually trading and moving on from Zach Levine that's going to be a big conversation all offseason long I absolutely think that it's a move that they should make it became clear in the middle of the year that they were much better when Levine wasn't playing, when he was out due to injury stuff. And it just kind of like the DeRozan thing feels like it's run its course. The problem is he signed to a massive contract for the next couple of seasons and has had more than his fair share of injury issues. And so this might be a situation where Chicago can't get value out of Zach Levine. They might have waited too long. It might be a situation where they are getting offers to attach something to Zach Levine just to get rid of the contract. And at that point, that doesn't feel like a very good idea anymore for Chicago. But to me, priority number one in the offseason is to try and find a trade partner. Try and find a team that is desperate for what Zach Levine can provide as a scorer, as a creator, as a shooter. He can still be really good in those areas if he's healthy. It's just you have to find a team that is willing to take the risk on the contract. And that's priority one. On the bright side for Chicago, they do have some cool pieces. I like Io. And I really like Kobe White. I wasn't a big Kobe White guy coming into the year, but this has been an unbelievable season for him. I mean, it's one of the like more out of nowhere stories that we've had over the last couple of seasons is a guy that just suddenly becomes like a high level starting guard. He can score, he can shoot, his improved passing, a little bit of a ball hog sometimes, but I mean, who else is he gonna pass the ball to in Chicago? I mean, it's him and DeMar and not much else, right? So um, really like Kobe White, really like Io. And the more important thing I think for Chicago in the off season is just, Let's just go and make the decision here. Like, it's it's clear to everyone involved, you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere anytime soon. And it's time to move on from DeRozan. It's time to move on from Crusoe. It's time to move on from Vucevic. It's time to move on from Levine. All of these guys have value. I'm getting deja vu because I said this exact same thing at the trade deadline. It is time to move on. It's it's really cool that you made the play-in game. It wasn't a great start to the year. You were able to turn it around and make the play-in game. That's awesome. I and mean, there are other teams in the conference like the Nets that had a much worse year than you. And they they wish they could have made the play-in game and they didn't. Uh, so congrats for making it. But it's, time, it, 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 it's just time. It's been time, if we're honest. And the nice thing is... Caruso's got some value. Uh, DeRozan and a sign and trade's got some value. Levine, I think you could find a team desperate enough to get something for him. Vooch, 
I don't know about that one, but you can at least get rid of the money if you wanted to. And then once you start to make things a little bit leaner around Kobe White, around Io, around some of the other pieces on the roster, then you can start to look towards the future and what might be with some of these future draft picks, with some of these other options that you have. And to me, that has to be the decision. Like more than anything, they need a clear direction. They need to know where they're going, even if it isn't a rebuild. But I don't know how you could look at this situation from a team building perspective and not think, that it's time to make some significant changes. Now, the problem with the rebuild, and one of the reasons why they might not completely go all in on a rebuild this offseason is they owe their 2025 first round pick to the Spurs top 10 protected. So in a scenario in which they dump some guys, but they're still decent, the East isn't very good, uh, you know, maybe they give away the 11th or 12th pick next year. That's kind of the disaster scenario that Chicago probably wants to avoid. And the ownership group probably looks at this and says, hey, in the front office as well, we have an opportunity to, to have Levine, maybe bring back to Rosen and still be good next year, not give away a pick um, in the, you know, in the top 15, between 10 and 15 or so. That to me feels like a dangerous line of thinking. You can't do anything about the fact that you owe a top 10 protected pick to San Antonio next year. That can't be what you build your decision-making around in terms of what roster moves you make. It just can't be. Um, and I, at the end of the day, yes, it would be unfortunate to give away a pick like that. But also you could be really bad and end up picking in the top three next year and have Kobe wide and IO and maybe the first pick in the draft next year. That's a realistic possibility given the protections on the pick. And at the end of the day, it is the Bulls and I'm not gonna stand here and pretend like I know what's gonna happen with them or that I've ever really had any kind of a good read on what they're gonna do because I've said for two years that they should be rebuilding. I've said for two years that Levine and DeRozan and Caruso and Vooch and these guys should not be on the team. And every offseason, they re-sign Vooch. They hold on to Caruso at the trade deadline. They hold on to DeRozan at the trade deadline. They continue to say that they're going to try and build around Levine. But this season felt different. It felt like they finally found a little bit of a direction because of the Kobe White thing and because of the improvement of the team without Levine on the floor. And once you finally have a little bit of concrete evidence of like, oh, we could be better if we make some of these changes. This is what it could look like in two seasons. Then you start to really facilitate um, a potential rebuild. Again, the problem is um, it's an ownership group that doesn't want to get worse. They don't want to lose revenue. The front office, they don't want to lose their jobs. And so it, it, it's a hard sell a lot of the times and maybe it requires a change um, in the front office once again. And I, I respect what Chicago did over the last couple of seasons. They they really went for it. They brought in DeRozan. They brought in Vooch. They felt like they had an opportunity to, to build a possible contender in Chicago. And for about 40 games a couple of years ago, they were they look like the best team in the conference. And then Lonzo got hurt. Things fell apart. And ever since then, they just haven't been the same. And, you know, whatever run they may or may not make in the future, I think is going to depend on what they do in the offseason. And if you're a Bulls fan and you're you're concerned about going into a rebuild, I wouldn't be concerned about it. The worst thing they could do this offseason is to continue to try and win 40 games next year because you're just worsening your chances of being a legitimate contender anytime soon. They're not remotely close to that right now, and they're only going to get further away if they continue to try and bring back all these guys. So I'm expecting DeMar to leave. I'm expecting a Caruso trade, a Vooch trade. Maybe I shouldn't say expecting. I'm hoping for those things to happen, but it is Chicago. Uh, so you just never really know with this team and with this front office.